Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to slow things down a little bit. The last three weeks we have been go, go, go nonstop on some bigger projects like the TV frame and the pantry makeover, the coffee bar, and then trimming out the window last week here in the kitchen, all of which I am still so happy with. They all if I do say so myself, turned out really amazing and I'm so proud of them. But today I've got three smaller projects that I want to tackle and I thought that would be a perfect thing to video and share with you guys. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is painting this door trim. So if you'll remember back uh, maybe a month or two ago, I painted these doors black and I left the trim around them white because I wasn't quite sure, did I want the contrast of the white? Do I want it more the same color as the wall? I was trying to decide. So last week I ended up painting the other door over here, the one that goes to our laundry room. I painted it in Revere Pewter, which was the color I used for the cabinetry and the shelving in the pantry. And it's about a shade or two darker than the wall color. But when I painted it over here, it blends in really, really seamlessly and I kind of love the look of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on this door as well, the one that goes to our garage. So I'm gonna paint that first. And then second, this right here, which I will show you a little better look of here in a minute, is a French provincial vanity that belonged to my grandparents. And in this house, I'm gonna use it as a writing desk. So I have been on YouTube for almost a year, guys. So September will be the one year anniversary and I've never had a desk space to sit and edit videos. I've always sat on the sofa, in bed, at the dining table. And I thought that it was high time that I had more of a dedicated space where I could sit and do some of that work. Not to say that I won't still get in bed and edit because I probably will. So I thought this would be such a beautiful piece that I could use and I could decorate with and it ends up being the exact perfect dimensions to fit into this space right here, which this little area has been such a thorn in my side. I don't know why I've had such an issue figuring out what to do with it, this corner of the dining room, but I think this is going to work out really lovely. I have picked out a paint color. Let me go grab it. So before anybody comes for me, this vanity, which hold on, let me give you a better look. So this vanity has always been painted from the get go. It came from the factory in like a creamy colored finish. So it's never been raw wood. The only thing that I did was I stripped the top of it in our previous home and did the stain on it. So the paint color that I chose is Templeton Gray by Benjamin Moore, and it is this pretty grayish, bluish green color. We have the blue in my grandfather's painting, the blue in my grandma's kimono in this painting. There's some blue in the rug. Of course, we have the Hale Navy blue in the living room. So I wanted to incorporate another variation of blue, and I think that this desk is going to serve as a great little pop of color. And of course, I'll show you guys how I style the desk at the end of the video. I also did want to mention that the vanity does have a bench that goes with it. But for the purposes of me using this as a desk to sit at and edit videos, a vanity bench is probably not going to be the most comfortable option. So for now, what I'm just going to do is because our dining table is just right here, I can easily just bring over one of our armless dining chairs to sit at when I use the desk. I may find a smaller slipper chair or accent chair later on that I can use, but for now, I think it'll be just fine to use one of our dining chairs. So lastly, I have had these beautiful moss covered urns in my Pinterest boards. And when I saw this urn at Tractor Supply, it was on clearance, it was normally $19.99 and I think I spent, I spent $11.99 on it. Now it doesn't have as much detail as the ones that I had seen on Pinterest, but I bought a textured spray paint and I'm gonna see what I can do to give it some more character, kind of age it up a little bit 
And then I'm thinking I'll do some sort of a moss dome on the top of it and it'll be a really pretty centerpiece on the dining table. So this is going to be the last project we do because I'm going to have to run to probably Joann's to look for the moss. See if I can't use a coupon over there for that. So now that I've given you guys an overview of the projects that I want to tackle today, let's just get started.
like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this French provincial vanity by Drexel belonged to my grandparents. It was in their guest bedroom, which was my room when I stayed with them in the summer. My parents would get that room when we all visited together. But regardless, I would spend hours in front of it doing my hair and my makeup, playing dress up when I was little. It's funny how so many of my fondest childhood memories are tied to these pieces of furniture. I am so blessed to have them in our home now. I know that not everybody has that luxury. Do y'all have pieces like that in your own homes? Um, pieces that belong to members of your family that you have fond memories of that you get to look at every day in your own homes? Anyhow, I digress, but this paint color, Templeton Gray by Benjamin Moore, is just so pretty. I can already tell that it will complement the shades of blue in the rug and in the paintings in the dining room. I'm actually considering doing the bottom cabinets in the kitchen in this color as well. That's going to be a little bit bigger commitment though, so I'm going to think on it for a little bit. But I certainly think it's a contender because I want to bring in more warmth and get away from the all-white kitchen um, that we've got right now. I definitely know that I'm going to love it on this desk though. I'm going for a very European farmhouse slash cottagey feel in this home and this color just seems so perfect for that aesthetic. So this particular technique for restoring brass fixtures is one that I saw in several blog posts on Pinterest. I didn't end up measuring the vinegar or the salt, but if you want precise measurements, I can link a couple of the blog posts that I looked at um, down below in the description box. I would suggest, however, that you don't use a pot that you are still using to cook in. This pot used to be one of my favorites, but the enamel on the inside has started to chip away and it's no longer really safe to cook in. So it ended up being perfect for this project. I ended up leaving the poles in the boiling solution for probably 30 to 40 minutes, which was a little bit longer than I was anticipating. Um, but by the end of that time, the paint had virtually just fallen right off. Um, 
it really was that simple and the tone that it left the poles was just so beautiful. So I've been really drawn to European interiors over the last few years. I've taken so much inspiration from English cottage style and French country, Italian, and one of the things that I keep seeing are these beautiful stone urns that are filled with moss that have layers of rust and patina. And I wanted to create something similar to that in our own home as a centerpiece for our dining table. When I saw this particular urn on clearance at Tractor Supply, it was the last one that they had. So I went ahead and grabbed it and I thought that even though it doesn't have as much detail as some of these other ones that I've seen on Pinterest, that it would be a good piece to at least try this um, idea that I have in my head on. Okay guys, so I've got the first layer of paint on here and it gives it, I don't know how much y'all can tell, but it gives it that stone-like texture. So it already feels a little bit more authentic. It doesn't feel so slick like the metal was before. So now I'm going to go over it with a flat black, which I know seems sort of counterintuitive since it was already black, but we wanted to add that texture in. So anyhow, I'm going to go back over it with the flat black and then once that dries, I'm going to see what I can do with like some dry brushing of different rusty colored paints to see if I can give it a little more patina. I think an urn like this is going to be so versatile as a table centerpiece just because of the ways that you can fill them for the seasons. Um, you could switch out the moss that I'm going to be using right now for pumpkins or dried florals in the fall or a small tabletop tree of some sort during the holidays or even filling it with pine cones, the possibilities really are going to be endless. So basically what I did here was I just took some old wrapping paper and rolled it into a ball and then secured it with painter's tape. And then I put a little bit more wrapping paper at the bottom of the urn so that when I put the wrapping paper ball on top, it would just fit nice and snug. This next part is going to be a little harder to explain because I'm really just kind of winging it. I went through my craft paint that I had on hand and picked out three colors that I thought could represent varying layers of rust and patina when they're mixed together and when they're used separately. This part is going to be important because you don't want it to be just one color. You want there to be variations like there would be if it was aging over time outdoors. 
I'm using an old makeup brush for the application and doing my best to dry brush it on, but it does go on a little thick in a few places. But I actually found that rubbing the paint into the urn with a paper towel helped to really give it more of a natural look and it helps to get that rust color into the texture as well so it doesn't look just like there's paint sitting on top of it. Okay, so I went ahead and I spray painted my paper and tape black so that once I put the moss on, if there was any gaps in the moss, you wouldn't see like the white paper or the blue tape sticking through. I went ahead and grabbed two different types of moss. I got this big bag at Joann's. I used my 40% off coupon. So I think I ended up spending just under $10 for it, if memory serves. And then I picked up this one at Hobby Lobby for $4.99. And this one's got a little bit more clumpy texture to it, which I really like. So I'm going to start with this and then fill in with this one. Um, and then I'm going to use this one to fill in any of the small gaps. I'm going to try to do this with hot glue. I'm not sure how that'll work, but we're going to give that a try. I ended up only needing to use the smaller bag of moss. I liked that one best anyways. Um, I liked the texture of it more. Uh, since I wasn't entirely sure in the beginning whether or not it would be enough to cover the entire paper ball, I did put it on kind of sporadically just in case. But as you'll see at the end, I did end up having just enough to cover the whole thing. So now to my favorite part, the decorating. This is a lamp that I got on Facebook Marketplace this week for $20. It is brass and then it has a crystal center to it. 
and then a milk glass shade on the top. It has the sweetest little pull chain and I am just obsessed with it. This right here is a vintage Webster's Dictionary that I picked up at Goodwill for a couple of dollars, I think late last year. And this is one of my Courier and Ives saucers. I've got about six or seven of them in that exact pattern and I use them all over the house in different ways. And then this is just a framed military document of my grandpa's. And of course I have to have hydrangeas, they're my favorite. And a sweet little photo of my husband when he was little. And this little vintage brass swan that I picked up at an antique store not that long ago. I just love it. y'all this is the end of this week's video I had a sweet little outro prepared but turns out I didn't hit record like I thought I did rookie mistake right so in any event I wanted to thank you all for taking the time to watch these videos every week and for engaging with me in the comments and liking the videos I am seriously humbled beyond measure by all of you and and I'm so grateful for this YouTube journey that we are on together so until next week, y'all, bye now.